All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, Coach Matt here for this week's Nutrition Talk. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about um, being in a caloric deficit. Uh, most of us have started prep, and you should be in a, a semi-caloric deficit, uh, depending on what your body fat percentage is, so to, to get you prepared for uh, the stage and, and things to come. So... Um, when you're trying to lose weight, there's multiple ways you can do that. Uh, three ways, actually. Uh, one way is being in a caloric deficit, which means you are burning more calories than you are taking in. Um, so you that would put you in what they call a caloric deficit. The opposite side of that is being in a caloric surplus, where you are ingesting more calories than you are expending. So then you are going to uh, do the reverse and you're going to gain weight. All right. Um, another way to uh, lose weight is to increase your activity level um, while maintaining your uh, caloric intake uh, or being at a maintenance, uh, being at a maintenance stage. Uh, and the third way is to do both, to mix them both together, to be in a caloric deficit, add additional uh, calories burned to, to equal a, hopefully a faster caloric uh, deficit to uh, help you maximize losing more weight. All right. Um, two things that you need to know in order for this to be successful is you need to know what your daily caloric requirement is. Um, there is a uh, a formula called the, the Mifflin St. Gior formula. Uh, it helps you calculate your daily caloric intake uh, based off of your height, your weight, your sex, your age, and your activity level. Um, there, there is a formula. It, it's kind of hard to describe, but I can drop it in the chat uh, for you guys to test it out later, or I can drop the link in there so that you guys could try it for yourself. I did it for myself. Um, you know, 180 pounds right now, um, 69 inches, and I'm 40 years old, and I consider myself pretty, uh, pretty active. So that came out to my daily caloric needs being 2,953 kilo, uh, kilocalories or calories per day. Um, so knowing what I know for what my caloric intake is time now. Um, that I'm in, in, in taking about 2000 to 2100 calories per day. So I would be in a caloric deficit of 800 calories per day. Um, it also says, it also gives you your range, uh, your range shoots like from the low end, it's at 1900 calories on the high end. It's like 2,453 calories per day. So the, the high, high end, the 2953, that is like on a day when all running on all cylinders, you're burning the most calories, like what you would need to sustain would be 2900. All right. So the most of the studies that I did research on for this uh, said that a, a good starting point for a lot of people, especially if you want to lose calories uh, at a quick, quicker rate than normal is to, to cut your calories by 500% or 500 calories. So if you're ingesting 2,200 calories and you cut 500 calories off, your new diet says that you should, your new caloric intake should be 1,700 calories. Does that make sense or does anybody have any questions right now? All right, so cutting 500 calories from your uh, caloric intake is not too bad. Um, some people might uh, want to take it a little bit slower, so they, they'll cut at uh, 300 calories or 200 calories, and then they'll so, slowly increase over time, or they'll cut 300 calories for a week or two, and then they'll cut another 200 calories two weeks after that, uh, giving them the 500 calorie deficit that they're looking for. So all these things have to do um, with your metabolism though, because as you decrease the calories going in, your body is physically going to not have enough energy to burn more energy, more calories. 
So when you go into a huge caloric deficit, you are physically not giving your body enough of the nutrition that it needs in order to burn calories. There's a thing called a thermobolic rate, and that is your body's natural way of burning calories, just doing normal activities, walking, breathing, talking, um, anything of that sort. So things that can impact your metabolism is there are certain types of medication that can impact your metabolism. If you're not getting a good uh, night's sleep, uh, the they say yeah, like, anywhere from six to eight hours is good. And um, stress, stress is another huge factor that a lot of people don't think about. If you are, you know, a stress monster and you stress out just about a lot of things, right. if you if you stress out about a lot of things, stress is going to uh, impair your sleep. When you don't get a good night's sleep, you're not going to have enough energy um, to be able to uh, carry out your needs for the next day. It'll also affect your hormones and your cortisol levels, which also can have a huge impact on your uh, metabolism and burning fat. Uh, for my female uh, competitors out there, uh, if you're old enough and your body is going through hormonal changes like menopause, that can affect your metabolism. And then uh, there's other things like if you have too few calories, if you try to take uh, too much of a caloric deficit, your body's literally not going to have enough nutrition to sustain uh, any type of workout. Um, it's not going to be able to sustain and it's going to just automatically slow down your metabolism because what your body is going to do, it's going to go into a fight or flight mode and it's going to preserve everything that it can to protect itself from you harming it, right? Um, so some things that you can do when you uh, start a caloric deficit is number one is uh, staying hydrated, keeping your body hydrated as much as possible, making sure you have enough water so that you can burn off and sweat off, uh, sweat literally sweat out the fat. Um, your diet needs to consist of high protein so that you're not burning your, your muscle tissue uh, and you're, you're targeting the fat. You also want to make sure you're uh, eating enough vegetables and fruit if, if that's what's in your meal plan. Obviously, veggies are free game, um, and we can't really overdose on those. Uh, fruits, we, we want to keep in, in a, a good range to not overdo those because they do have a lot of sugar uh, that can stack up. You also want to give your body a good multivitamin, all right? Uh, so when you're in a caloric deficit, your body may or may not be getting all the, the micronutrients that we talked about or vitamins and minerals that you're, you're getting from your daily uh, protein and from your other sources. So taking a multivitamin is going to help your body get back to its um, normal range. Uh, doing a little research, uh, one, one of the YouTubers that I really like to watch because he, he does a lot of really good videos and he always backs it up with science is Jeff Nippard. Um, and he states that the first law of thermodynamics is that if you are in a calorie surplus, you are storing net energy, so net excess. Uh, if you are in a caloric um, surplus or deficit, you will lose net energy, so you will burn off more energy or, or fat. Uh, so a lot of people can get confused saying that you can't grow muscle or be in a catabolic state when you're trying to burn fat, which is known, um, or sorry, you cannot build muscle being in an anabolic state building uh, while you're in a caloric deficit trying to burn fat or a catabolic uh, process, uh, which all the, all the science that he researched and all the science that I've researched has disproven that you can still build uh, lean muscle while being in a caloric deficit is just going to be much more incremental. All right. It's going to be very, very slight. So uh, two things that you can go uh, that need to be hand in hand with your caloric deficit and maintaining or gaining your lean muscle mass is having an intense resistance training program and a high protein diet. 